I'm going to look back at 2023 and some of the highlights. Pretty much dominated by a few things. Next on Sean's Table. Cloud RPG? Whatever this channel's name is. 2023 actually starts at the end of December 2022, where enworld.org puts out a nomination list of top anticipated RPGs for the following year, 2023. I won't claim to understand what's all involved in a crowdfunding campaign. I can only imagine the complexities in all of the moving parts. Everything from coordinating shipping schedules to printers, overseas shipping, delivery, proofs, multiple proofs probably getting wrong. There's a lot of moving parts that go into the delivery of a crowdfunding campaign. The unfortunate thing is many of the anticipated games for 2023 were crowdsourced and some of them we haven't even received to actually play yet. Well, hopefully we'll see them in 2024. What Sean proposed in his article was creating a mega dungeon. And you would, for each day of the year, create a single room and a single description. Also known as Dungeon 23, Sean McCoy of Mothership fame came up with the idea on his Substack. You do one dungeon room a day, and then you'll, at the end of the year, have 365 rooms across 12 different levels, each level corresponding to each month. Now, those are just some of the guidelines, but Dungeon 23 was no joke. This guy gave up probably as early as, I don't even know if I made it to March, honestly. <laughs> But I gotta admit, I know one guy who finished it. His name's Phil McClory. He's a friend of the show and friend of mine who I game with. I haven't looked at it, but man, congratulations if you made it through Dungeon 23. That is no joke. We're finally into January 2023, and before we really hit the fan with the big news that occurred, which some of you are already aware of, we had BSRCon. BSRCon 2, actually, Electric Boogaloo. That's a convention online that I run every January. Anyways, in 2023, we had about 130 uh, attendees and badge sales, and we had 47 events being offered over a three-day weekend where people were playing through via Zoom, Discord, whatever online tools that they wanted to use. And then we donated half the proceeds to the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, which amounted to just over $400. So. Hey, not bad, right? This is one of the biggest moments in the history of role-playing games. So people who create a lot of 5e content are worried about their livelihood if this uh, framework that Wizards of the Coast puts out is not going to be available to them. So Wizards of the Coast have decided to f*** that right off and attempt to completely screw over every content creator. They are attempting to revoke the old license and replace it with a new one, which is just so cartoonishly evil and horrible. To give a warning that what Wizards of the Coast was planning to change the OGL, and it will be significantly worse for third party creators. Through hubris, greed, and a desire for power and control, Wizards of the Coast has decided to try to deauthorize an agreement that third-party publishers have used to boost Dungeons & Dragons for more than 22 years. But, uh, what? Oh, who? We won. It's two minutes past nine on January 27th, 2023. And 54 minutes ago, Wizards of the Coast released a tweet on the D&D Beyond account. Dungeons & Dragons is not moving forward with planned changes to the OGL. The OGL 1.0a is saved. Huzzah! It's done! The battle is over! That's right, the biggest news ever in the OGL scandal has just dropped. And the news is, the OGL scandal is kind of over! Of course, Wizards of the Coast walked back their desire to remove the open game license. In so doing, they actually launched the system reference document for 5th edition, which outlines a lot of the systems and systems and mechanics details of the 5th edition game as a document under the Creative Commons license. But that didn't stop third-party publishers from getting away, far away as possible from that open game license. So many came together to create the Orc license. Many publishers who have mechanics and intellectual property 
but still want third-party publishers, third-party independent writers to contribute to their games and their systems, they created licenses for their own companies that community individuals can use. And it wasn't all bad for TTRPG publishers. Some had record sales in a very short amount of time. Print runs that were set aside for quarters at a time sold out in a matter of days. Joseph Goodman recorded a video welcoming new players to DCC, Goodman Games' flagship product. In a four minute video on the site, he wanted to talk a little bit about the origins of Dungeon Crawl Classics in an effort to show goodwill for players that feel alienated by the tactics Wizards of the Coast was using, helping them come over to a different game to play. Game masters, players, publishers, artists, developers, designers, we all like to use tools. They help us get things done. It makes some of our lives easier. There's one tool that came about in 2023 that has certainly got its fair share of attention. Now, AI is another more powerful tool, and it's going to be used by those people, um, you know, for basically uh, really evil purposes. Dolly and Stable Diffusion, almost anyone can create new art in a matter of seconds. Where the models ingest millions, sometimes billions of images scraped from websites all around the web. Combined with text describing the images, they now have a data set that lets them create almost any type of image from a simple text prompt. It produces some interesting stuff, but the problem is many artists never gave their consent for their art to be used in an image generator like this. His program learns the rough rules of art by scanning images on the internet. Type in a description of any picture you want. Like, I want a blue dog in the style of Art Deco. And boom. D&D's AI art scandal hopefully comes to an end. Having your own game group is fantastic, whether it be virtually or in person. There's challenges behind it. You gotta make sure you're playing a game with people that you mesh with. But 2023, man oh man, did we see the rise of a specific format and it's probably not going to slow down. That said, people do ask me about solo role-playing stuff all the time. You can, in fact, play a tabletop role-playing game by yourself. Maybe you're a DM and you just want an opportunity to play for once, or you want a fun way to test out campaign concepts or brainstorm for your group games. Or it could even be simpler than that. Maybe you just prefer playing alone. While solo TTRPGs might sound like a weird concept to people who are used to playing in groups, the history of one-player role-playing games stretches way back. My favorite discovery since getting into tabletop games, it would have to be solo RPGs. Sitting down to immerse yourself in a game, completely following your own intuition, your own curiosities, and getting into deep thoughts and feelings is something truly special. There's no question that crowdfunding has truly empowered creators to breathe life into unique and innovative projects. Removing the barriers and limitations of traditional publishing, game designers continue to turn directly to the community to fund their passion projects. This continues the explosive creativity with diverse and niche games finding support that might have been hard to come by otherwise. The sheer variety of campaigns is awesome, from immersive world building guides to groundkeeping game mechanics. The possibilities are endless. Say what you want about crowdfunding platforms, they have not only become treasure troves for discovering hidden gems, but the levels of exposure and revenue they generate for creator-led initiatives can be staggering. However, even in 2023, RPG crowdfunding campaign setbacks have not been eliminated. The biggest ailment that plagues these campaigns are delays. While we backers are eager to get our hands on their finished product, unforeseen obstacles can cause production hiccups. It's not uncommon for delivery dates to be pushed back, testing the patience of even the most understanding gamers. Hurdles will probably throw even the most well-planned projects off course. Some are better at it than others. Another challenge is the issue of quality control. With the rise of crowdfunding, some fall short of expectations, leading to disappointed backers. Crowdfunding has undeniably transformed the tabletop RPG landscape. 
It's a powerful tool that connects creators with their audience, fostering a sense of collaboration and community. While obviously the challenges exist, the benefits far outweigh them as we witness the birth of incredible worlds and adventures that might have never seen the light of day through traditional means. Gaming conventions. If you've never been to one, I highly recommend that you try. Getting together with your tribe to play games and discuss games and just mingle with other individuals that share the same passion for a great hobby is an experience like no other. In 2020, we had a global pandemic. Conventions disappeared off the face of the earth. In 2021, they started making a comeback, but there were quite a few limitations. Either attendance numbers were small, or there were mask mandates, and frankly, a majority of con-goers decided to stay home. In 2022, things started picking up a little bit more. Some of the restrictions subsided, but in 2023, some would say it's somewhat back to normal. As a matter of fact, not only are some gaming conventions at pre-pandemic levels, but they're starting to exceed those. I gotta say, the convention scene was certainly a positive one, at least for me. Having run BS or Con, and then attending in person at Gamehole Con here in Madison, Wisconsin in October, I got to see a lot, a lot, a lot of friends and a lot of gamers that I don't often see during the year. It was awesome. Some of the games I played included Knights Black Agents, Coriolis, Tales from the Loop, and Simbrew. Did I say Twilight 2000? Convention season was wrapped up and was certainly a highlight of my gaming year. But 2023 was not over. Just like we started out in January with Hasbro catching fire for the OGL debacle, not to mention the 800 layoffs that occurred in January, Hasbro found itself again in the media spotlight and announced 1,100 people would be cut from their global staff, some of which contributed directly to Dungeons & Dragons product line. This is all in an effort due to slumping toy sales and stock and Chris Cox mentioning that they have to cut 350 to $400 million by 2025. Unfortunate news at the end of the year, for sure. So that's our review of 2023. We know that there were other news events and happenings in the RPG hobby, but some of these were some of the big ones. I hope you had a really good 2023 in gaming and in life. I have to say, personally, I'm looking forward to 2024. I'm hoping it's even a better year. I think solo games are going to continue to grow. I think there's going to be some virtual tabletops that may not be able to last. Um, but I also think that there are going to be some new ones on the scene. I'm going to keep an eye on virtual reality with that maturing technology and how that's going to be impacting the role-playing game scene. I think we're going to get some crazy awesome crowdfunding campaigns, new games. We're going to meet new people. And I'll be attending Gameholcon Con in October. And hope to see you there. That's here in Madison, by the way. Just go to GameholeCon.com. And I hope to see some of the folks that I saw last year come to Gameholcon. Con. BSRCon, as of this recording, is already done. We'll be donating over $450 to the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. I think altogether we're probably close to over $1,600 in donations to that organization. Hope to see you in 2024. Thanks for sticking with me over all these times. If you're interested, I do stream on Saturdays at 8 a.m. Central Time right here live. You can certainly check the recordings, but with the chat and the interaction, it's, it's much better live in my humble opinion. If you like the video, give a thumbs up, give a thumbs down, make sure you subscribe. And remember, be a positive force in the tabletop RPG hobby. We'll see you on the next one.